Welcome to another sunny day in Belgrade, Serbia. Well, Zemun to be exact. I'm near the river Danube at the moment, just having a little stroll. The title of the video is 10 things that I hate about Serbia. Now, for those who've been following my channel, you know I love Serbia and I'm here quite a lot. I'm always promoting the country. But in this video, I wanted to try something a bit different and express my opinions uh, on Serbia. I think the word hate is quite a strong word. I don't actually hate anything. So I would say maybe more annoy or dislike. That would be the, the, you know, the agenda for this video. More of the things that annoy me or dislike about Serbia. So let's get into it. Before I start on the 10 things I hate about Serbia, I just want to give an honourable mention to a problem which I don't think is just in Serbia, but the world all over, because I've seen this thing before. It's a societal problem. Basically, I was on a bus the other day and I saw this guy he got on the bus, he was old, looked about 90 or something, not, you know, very steady on his feet. And what happened, there was a kid you know, uh, next to me, the, the, the bus was actually packed. And I said to this kid, I, I said, listen, I said, any chance of uh, giving you a seat to that old man? Obviously, he's not very steady on his feet. And the kid just totally ignored me. So. I've seen this happen in other countries, but I've seen it here in Serbia and to be honest with you, when I see somebody who's fit and able-bodied and they don't give up their seat for old people or pregnant women, I think that says a lot about the person. I think it's disgusting behaviour and it's something of which shows me a lack of respect really. So that's a bit of a bugbear. Um, like I say, I can't actually add that in the list, but you know, that's, I would say, a world problem. I've seen it in other countries as well, but I just want to make note of that to that kid. If you're watching, and basically, next time you see that old man, give him your seat, will ya? There's absolutely no need for that kind of disrespect in modern day society. Okay, number 10, parking. Now, parking seems to be a problem in the big cities. I went to Novi Sad a few weeks ago and basically saw some friends and we was trying to get, get to a pub, have a few beers or whatever, and you know, you couldn't find a parking spot for love nor money. It's the same in uh, Belgrade as well. You know, you can be traveling around in the car looking for a spot just to do, you know, a bit of a sightsee around the, the city or something. So you're best off really getting the bus, I think. So yeah, parking is an absolute nightmare. Plus my girlfriend, she parks about, I think it's about, unless you get to a spot near the garage, which is right next to where she lives, she has to park about 10 or 15 minutes up the road. So I don't know how, you know, Serbia can combat that, but parking, yeah, it's an absolute nightmare at times. Number nine, traffic. When it comes to Belgrade, people would say about the traffic here, and to be honest with you, I didn't really think much of it. I thought it's like any other city, but once you start getting taxis and buses and traveling around, then you'll notice the traffic. It is absolute chaos at times. Uh, here in Zemun, they've just dug up the high street and that's caused a lot of chaos. You've got buses going different routes. That's put an extra 20 minutes on my journey from in and out to Belgrade to here. Uh, it's a bloody nightmare. Um, you know, it doesn't matter what time of day, really in Belgrade, the, the traffic always seems to be heaving. And like I say, if you add roadworks to that, it's an absolute bloody nightmare. So yeah, traffic, that's an annoyance of mine. Number eight, scam artists, taxi drivers. Now, sometimes you need a taxi around Belgrade if there's no buses. I use an app called Cargo, and that's generally giving me a good price, but sometimes the cars are not always around. So you have to use other taxi firms. Um, I went to get a taxi in Belgrade the one day and it was literally uh, to a restaurant which was 10 minutes from uh, where I was in Belgrade and I approached the guy and I said to him, I said how much for uh, you know, this restaurant, how much the price and he quoted me £25 and I looked at him with disbelief. I think, I don't know, maybe because I'm speaking English all of a sudden he thinks I've got pots of gold um, I thought £25 for a 10 minute journey, I thought, you know, <laughs> he should wore a mask with a stripy jumper, that's, that's daylight robbery. Um, also got a friend who visited uh, Belgrade and I think he paid about £75 for a taxi 
from the airport to Belgrade city centre. So that's what you're dealing with. But again, that's a world problem as well. I've been to other countries where you know the taxi drivers make up their own price and they give you a sub story wanting more when they've agreed a price. But I think the way around this, I've seen certain taxi uh, drivers, they've got like the uh, meter in the taxi. And if they've got a meter, then generally you'll get that price. So that's probably my advice. If you can't get the cargo app, then look for a, a basically taxi driver who's got the meter so you get the right price. Or if you know the price, obviously you can bargain with the taxi driver. But some of them, yeah, they try it on. Like I say, £25 for a 10 minute journey. That's absolutely ludicrous, disgusting behaviour again. Number seven, this is one of my bugbears, the cost of toiletries. I'm not being funny, but a lot of people say about England is expensive. And okay, for some people it may be, but in different countries there's uh, wages that are comparable to what you're purchasing regarding household items, uh, rent, uh, clothes, different things. So in my outlook, toiletries in Serbia, in the supermarkets, and even on the markets where people said, oh, go there, it's cheaper. They should be cheaper than England. But to my surprise, the cost of toiletries here are like, like double, triple the price of England. So that makes me wonder, the cost of living in Serbia People are on a you know a minimum wage like we are in England. I'm just wondering how can people afford to buy these items which you know are everyday needs. I think toilet toilet roll. I mean, you know, it's one of those things we all need. But well, like I say, when you're paying double, triple the price of what you are in England, you know, it just it just absolutely blows my mind. I saw, uh, I think it was a, I'll give you an example, I saw some deodorant in a supermarket and they're asking for five pounds for it. And in England you can get, you know, uh, roll on deodorants and whatever for a pound. So how the hell does this work? Whoever's come up with the prices, I don't know, they need their head looking into because I just think that is absolutely bonkers. How can you charge those prices? And when I do go into the supermarkets, I noticed all these toiletries, they're all proper stocked. Now, I don't think anybody's buying them, so they've got to bring the price down of toiletries, definitely. It's absolutely insane. Okay, we're motoring through these. Number six, table service in bars and nightclubs. Now, I've got a bit of a problem with this, especially in bars. I went to an Irish bar in Belgrade city centre the one day, and... I was waiting for a friend and I went to the bar and I said, I'll have, a, I'll have a pint, whatever. And I said, I'll sit at the bar. And he said, you can't do that. I said, what? He said, you can't, you can't sit at the bar. I said, why is that then? He said, it's reserved. And I'm thinking to myself, a bar reserved? I mean, I've never heard of this in my life. He said, you've got to go and pick a table. So I got myself a table in the end, but I was thinking, I was going to turn and say to him, what about if I need the toilet? Is that reserved too? I mean, I don't understand it. What, what this does for me, uh, table service in bars and in nightclubs, I think it puts a border around people of actually socialising together. Um, I find that as a solo traveller, that when you go into a pub, when you're on your own, it's good to actually socialise with people. You don't want to just sit there in a bar on your own and, and just... You know, just look at the, the scene or the walls. You want inter interaction with people. So I find table service in every bar and every nightclub, something has to be done about that. You can't do it in every every place. I just think, like I say, it, it creates borders for people uh, socialising. So yeah, that for me, um, it's not a good thing for a, for a solo traveller. Not at all. I just think it's, it's unsociable. Number five, dog crap on pavements. Now, this is another thing that I've noticed in Belgrade. Um, you're walking down the street, then all of a sudden, you see like a bit of dog mess, and you think to yourself, you know, it's the owners of those dogs who just leave that mess on, on the street, that is total disrespect. I mean, obviously you've got kids on bikes, got kids playing, it's not a good thing. Um, in England, we basically uh, find people if they just leave their dog mess, on the pavements so a lot of people carry bags 
it's not hard to do. I just think it's a bit of respect. It's having a bit of pride in your city. When you see dog crap everywhere, it's not a good thing. And not only that, it can basically cause a lot of uh, diseases and things. Like I say, especially with kids playing around, put their hands in things and whatever else, it's not good. So I think that needs to be stamped out here definitely. Because, you know, Belgrade, it's a really nice city. I've seen it in Zemun as well. Uh, bits in Novi Sad. And, you know, you don't want to be constantly looking on the floor, watching where you're going, so you don't step in something. I just think the owners need to, like I say, take responsibility. If you've got a pet and basically you're letting your dog crap everywhere and you're not picking it up, then it shows a lot about your character as well. You're just a selfish person. So, yeah, that needs to be stamped out. I'd even recommend fines for dog crap as well, definitely. Show a bit of respect and let's keep the city clean. Okay, number four, the recent Football World Cup. Now, I know the Football World Cup wasn't held in Serbia, but for me, when I was actually traveling to Serbia, I was thinking I'm really excited to actually be here when the Football World Cup's on, because I was expecting big screens in the cities uh, like we do in England, and like I've seen in other countries, I've been to Portugal, and they have big screens, and the, the fans come out, have a few beers, it's good atmosphere. So, when I knew the World Cup was on when I was coming here, I like to say I was absolutely buzzing. But to my amazement, there was no screen at all anywhere. Nothing in Belgrade. Um, I didn't see any flags waved. Um, didn't see any people in football shirts. Um, I know it was a bad World Cup, but I'm talking beforehand. I was really surprised how Serbia done to be honest with the, the players they've got. Um, but yeah, I'm talking beforehand, there was no buzz. There was no uh, atmosphere here. It was totally dead. And I can't understand that because I've had people actually message me uh, on Instagram and saying, oh, we've, we've just won the uh, women's volleyball uh, tournament. I can't remember which that, which that was, if it was Olympic Games or something. And people were going out drinking for that and excited. And I was thinking, well, okay, if people are getting excited about a women's volleyball tournament, no disrespect, football for me, is the number one sport in the world. I know people have got different sort of opinion here, people like basketball, um, but for me, football is number one. And I've seen what a half uh, full stadium is like at Partizan when they had a big night uh, against Cone. And I know what kind of atmosphere the fans can generate here. So to actually not see any kind of atmosphere at all for uh, the Serbia World Cup campaign, that was a massive surprise to me and also it was gutting because, like I say, I love my football and I thought without a shadow of a doubt they'd have big screens on in the, the city centre to show those games and there was nothing at all. And what I thought was funny also, they showed uh, partisan basketball, uh, they played Real Madrid in the EuroLeague not long ago. They had screens set up at Calamagdan there, so they can actually do that. So it was just a massive surprise to me that I didn't see any big screens anywhere around Serbia. I don't know, it could be different from if you're from Nice or somewhere or somewhere else, but I thought the capital city, I thought 100% they'd have big screens there for the World Cup. Like I said, there was no atmosphere, so that was a massive disappointment to me. Okay, number three, politics in sport. Now for me, politics in sport, it's not a good combination. Um, I've seen clubs that basically boycotted games because they're displeased with the management. Now, I know there's different cultures out there, but I'm just talking as a tourist what I see. Now, what we do in England, if we're displeased with the board, we still go and watch the football match because we're a fan, right? So we'll go down there. But it seems here that people will basically boycott the club and not get in at all. Now, what that does, if you're a fan, I feel that's detrimental to uh, the club, in a sense, okay. Uh, People could argue different different uh, sides of the coin, but I think it's detrimental if you're a fan. You say you're a fan and you don't actually go down to watch the club that you support. Uh, you'd rather boycott them. Um, I just feel that really, for me again, I'm talking as a tourist coming in, I'm expecting to see this great atmosphere at the football clubs. And when I see the politics involved in sports and, and like I say, fans boycott clubs and things, for me, it's, it's a really hard thing to actually go and record a game and try and whip up an atmosphere myself when there's nobody at the stadium. 
And also, I think as a football player, when you look at an empty stadium, you know, it's going to be a lot better if you've got a full stadium behind you, really giving you their true support. You know, I've had messages of uh, fans and say they're the true fans and everything, but for me, a true fan is somebody who will follow their club through thick and thin. Now, this might be controversial to some people. You may disagree with me. Like I say, we've all got opinions in life. But for me, if you're a true fan, you go and watch your club through thick and thin. And if you're unhappy with the board or whatever else, then you show your uh, displeasurement actually at the game. And you still give the players the support that they need to get the win. I was here two years ago and I said basically there was no football on because of COVID. Now, if you can remember back to them times, that was depressing. Empty stadiums, it was like the football matches like training games. And I said when I come here two years ago, I said football is nothing without the fans. And I still stand by that today. Doesn't matter about politics or whatever else, if there's no fans at the stadium, then for me, football is nothing without the fans. The basketball here, uh, it was the hottest ticket in town. But the football, you couldn't actually pay people to go. So for me, that's quite depressing. So I would like to see packed out stadiums again and I would really like to experience a true Serbian atmosphere because I feel a bit cheated in that sense where I haven't seen a full football stadium. Number two, something called Curva. I think that's how you pronounce it. That's a tipping system that I've never ever heard of in my life in restaurants. I went for a meal the other day and that's the first time I experienced it. What it is, they say it's a charge for your cutlery. Um, maybe, you know, some bread, something else. But I've never heard of this tipping system in my life. And I'll give the waiter a tip. He didn't mention it. Uh, the restaurant didn't mention it. And like I say, give the waiter a tip already. But looking into the bill, there was another tip there for Curva. So does the waiter get that tip? I don't know. But for me, tipping systems, it doesn't work. I think that kind of practice, for me, I'm dead against it. Uh, not because I'm tight or anything. Uh, it's just because... For me, tipping systems, I look at America. Um, I know bar people in America, some get paid a dollar an hour uh, for a 40 hour week, of which they get taxed on, which is absolutely insane. So if you go into a bar in America and you don't tip the waitress after a few beers, then obviously you're gonna get a load of verbal. She's gonna <laughs> really cuss you out. So really, really, really what, what's happening there you're paying her wages and I think that kind of practice it's not a good thing uh, any tipping kind of system if you want to give a tip that's from your own discretion if you think you've had a good service then by all means you, you tip the waiter but in England what they do they give you a flat rate so there's no tipping system there but generally like I say if you had good service then you tip but yeah, that was the first time I've seen uh, something called Curva the other day and I thought it was really sneaky. So that's another annoyance of mine. Okay, that leads me to number one. And my biggest annoyance is that Serbia is so addictive. I've done so many videos. I've promoted this country. I've met so many great people. I've tasted so much great food. I absolutely love the place. I'm always spending my money here and I need to explore more. I've only been to a few places, but Believe you and me, more places on the agenda for me to visit. Like I say, I can't get enough of it. So like I say, to my annoyance, I'm spending all my money here. Okay, that's all from me. I'm gonna try a few more things content-wise. Let me know the things that you hate about Serbia or the things that annoy you. Also, share your comments down below and tell me what you think of my thoughts. I'll be intrigued to know. Okay, I'm signing off. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Jivali.